Praise the Lord, everybody. We're so excited for yet another installment of DCLA's TDM Live. And I'm so excited that we are here together and we are just going to saturate this atmosphere. I just believe that when two or three are gathered in his name, surely he'll be in the midst. So for the next few moments, I want you to just forget about whatever it is that was on your heart before, whatever was on your mind, whatever was stressing you out, whatever was trying to pull out your edges, child. We're going to go and lay all those things down on the altar, lay all of our burdens down, shake off all of our cares, and just go before the throne of grace, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just bless your name. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Father, we esteem you to be a divine deity. Father, we esteem you of all glory and honor and power and dominion. Oh God, you are sovereign. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are matchless. You are perfect in all of your ways. Father, we just thank you for your presence. For in your presence, that's where the fullness of joy is. In your presence, that's where healing can take place. Father, in your presence, that's where we get our healing and restoration, oh God. In your presence, oh God, that's when everything in our life can change. So Father, we lay our worries and our cares on the altar this morning, Father, and we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that you would be close to the brokenhearted, Father, that you would heal and soothe even the wounds, Father, from former seasons, oh God. Every traumatic event, Father, every childhood trauma, oh God, Lord, we lay it down on the altar and we won't pick it back up again. Now, Father, we pray right now for a righteous mind, for your word says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, Father, we come against every chemical imbalance, Father. Father, we come against every psychological trigger that would come to cease and to disrupt and to hinder and to delay and to block the blessings of God. Father, we come against every type of fiery dart from the enemy that would try to convince us. Hallelujah, some water that will try to convince us that we are not capable, that we are not comfortable, that we cannot do what it is that God placed on, on the inside of us. So Lord, we just thank you right now for a righteous mind. Hallelujah, we thank you for a whole mind. Hallelujah, oh God. We bless your name and we thank you, oh God, for how you can restore, for how you can restore and redeem even the time that was taken away from us, oh God. Many of us, we spent time in seasons that were unfruitful. We spent time in relationships that were unfruitful. Oh, but God, we pray right now that you will begin to redeem the time that even the locust and the canker worm tried to destroy, that tried to eat away at our time. So Lord, in this moment, in this atmosphere, in this temperature, Father, in this culture, in this society, in this time, in this day, in this age, Father, we need you to move, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, since we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, oh God, we need the Holy Spirit to come in like an all-consuming fire oh God hallelujah thank you right now father for the fire of God that can burn out <coughs> everything that's not like it we thank you for the fire of God that's going to fall into this place oh God we thank you for the full manifestation of your glory hallelujah we thank you for the full manifestation of your blessing hallelujah we thank you for the full manifestation of everything that you promised us everything that you called us to be oh God hallelujah we thank you for our calling Hallelujah, we thank you for our anointing. We thank you for the purpose and the plan that you placed on the inside of us, Father. So we ask and we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, give us strength for our assignment today, God. Give us strength for our assignment today, Lord. There's so many things that you placed on our hearts, so many ideas, so many innovations, so many dreams, so many aspirations, so many ambitions that you put on the inside of us. And Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, let this be your word, Father. Hallelujah, these are your people and this is your word. So Father, speak through me today. And I pray that you would see the full glory of the return of the investment of the breath of life that you placed on the inside of us, Father. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would move like only you can move. Hallelujah. Say whatever you want to say, oh God. Do whatever you want to do, Father. Hallelujah. We are vessels that are ready and available to be used, Lord. Use us in this moment, Lord. Use us, Father. If you can find any gift or talent or skill, Lord, use us today, Father. You are the potter. And we are the clay. Make us, shape us, form us. Make us to what you need us to be in this yeah, moment. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you for health and strength, Father. We thank you for a renewed mind, oh God. We thank you for healing a broken heart, Father. We thank you for restoring, hallelujah, everything that the enemy tried to steal. And we declare and decree that no weapon formed against us. 
Come on, somebody. No weapon formed against me. Hallelujah. The government tried to form a weapon. Hallelujah. Depression tried to form a weapon. Anxiety tried to form a weapon. Come on. My family tried to form some weapons. The pettiness tried to form some weapons. But it doesn't matter what comes up against me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. The, the Bible said it wasn't going to form. Oh, but it's not going to prosper. Thank you, Lord, that everything that the enemy has signed to my name and we're not prospering this season. And every tongue that rises up in judgment shall be condemned. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the authority. And we rest and we stand in it. And we thank you for girding us with your power, your influence, your ability. And Lord, we just thank you for the word that's going to come forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody. I said in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. I'm so excited for what God is about to do in this place. And so right before we get into today's word, we have a message from our ministry, from our hearts to yours. So uh, right after this quick message, we'll be back with a word straight from the lips of the Lord. Would bless you. We pray that this word would speak life into you and your family. We want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel, turn on your post notifications, because we believe God is about to do something special in this ministry, and we cannot wait to share it with you. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so glad that you guys stayed so that way we can live, deliver this word. Hallelujah. God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. I'm so excited for what the Lord is about to do in this place. We have been in such an amazing series entitled So. Have you been loving it? Yeah. It is so amazing. We love it. Uh, so it's essentially, it's seeds on water. And Pastor Javier, from the first week of our series entitled So, he said something about when seeds get into connection with water, they begin to activate. And there's something I heard on social media. You know, there's this woman, she goes, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Activate. Come on. It made me feel good. And the moment he said, I said, yes, Lord, activation. I felt that in my spirit. And it's something so amazing when believers, when we all get together, Something activates. Mm -hmm. Something activates, and we get revelation, we get understanding, we get clarity and insight about who we are and where we're going and where we've been and what we're doing. And so um, I feel that this series entitled So is so important because it's not just about money, which most people always think it's always about money, but it's also about working the soil of our heart and that God would drop a seed that we will begin to see a perpetual harvest in our business, in our family, in our friendships, in our relationships, in our careers. We'll be able to see the harvest, what the Holy Spirit is and the fruit of the Spirit. It is the evidence that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. So you should begin to see evidence that the Holy Spirit is active in your life. And so when you get in connection with ministries like this, that's when you start to see the full evidence and the fullness of what God has planned for our lives. So. If I were to select a title for this message, it would be entitled ROI. And if you don't know anything about all of the legal and financial terms, it's a term um, used in the finance industry, and it's called a return on investment. Return on investment. I'm going to be reading from Matthew, the 25th chapter, and we're going to start at the 14th verse, okay? And here in the scripture, we have something that I love. I love reading the word of God, okay? When y'all see me pray, that's only scratching the surface about 10% of what my prayer life really looks like, okay? But I love the word of God, and I especially love this tactic, this tool, this technique that Jesus would often use. He used something we like to call parables. And parables, essentially, is an everyday life kind of story that is applicable to what the kingdom of heaven is like. 
Jesus would often say, oh, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a farmer. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a rich man. The kingdom of heaven is like unto grapes. The kingdom of heaven is like a fig tree. And, and he would just use everyday life events to give us some insight onto what kingdom culture and kingdom concepts were all about, okay? So we have a parable here in Matthew chapter 25, starting at the 14th verse, okay? I'm going to read it. It's a little wimpy, okay? And I'm pretty sure you've heard this story before, but the only distinction is this. I'm gonna preach it a totally different way, okay? Whatever preconceived notion you got in your head, we're not preaching it that way, okay? So we're gonna read Matthew chapter 25, starting at the 14th verse. And it reads, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another, and to, an, and, and to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that received five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. That's good. And likewise, he that had received two had also gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid the Lord's money. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We make you big in this moment. And Lord, we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, in our spirit. Father, this is your word, and these are your people. Speak through me in this moment. Let it be all of you and none of me, Father. Lord, you know I'm not smart enough to even create a message like this. So, Holy Spirit, you're just going to have to have your way through me today. I give you glory. I give you honor, and I give you all control over this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You know... I was mentioning earlier about what my prayer life looks like, and I was telling you guys how 10% of what y'all see up here is really like, this is really what my prayer life is like, but my prayer life, it, it varies sometimes. You know, sometimes I have prayers that it is, my lips are quivering and the sweat is rolling down my, my, my forehead and the cheeks are, you know, my, my, my tears are just filling up all over my cheeks and I just feel like the, the sacredness of God and I feel the, the heaviness and the weight and I wake up at 4 a.m. and I'm praying. Sometimes my prayers are like that. Other times my prayers are kind of silly. I don't know about y'all, but my prayer life can be a little silly sometimes. Sometimes I have prayers you know, especially when I was first trying to learn the voice of the Lord, I started having prayers like, Lord, how do you think I should do my hair today? Or I have prayers like, Lord, what do you think I should eat for dinner today? Or, you know, especially whenever I was working at a job that I felt undervalued, I felt overlooked, I felt underpaid. Come on, somebody. Do I have anybody in this place that feels like that sometimes? Okay. I was working at a job that I felt like I was overqualified for and undersatisfied. And I remember driving home from work that day, and I was praying one of my silly kind of prayers. I was praying, you know, real petty kind of prayers, like, Lord, I pray that person would just trip and fall. That ain't right. That ain't right. It ain't right. Or I'd pray, I'd be like, Lord, would you be mad if I went to happy hour after work because they got on my nerves? That's a petty prayer, and I'm pretty sure the Lord, you know, sometimes I'm pretty sure that he, he you know, he'll talk to me, and he'll be like, Tal, you are crazy. And I'd be like, yes, Lord, I know you made me this way. So... I said all that to say this. There was one particular evening where I was praying one of my silly kind of prayers, you know, and I was driving, and this was when I was first trying to understand what the voice of the Lord was like. And as I was driving, I heard the Lord tell me, hey, make a left right quick. And so I, I made a left because I was just trying to hear what he was saying. And, and I felt like an urgency. I felt like, a, like a, 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 an unction in my spirit that, okay, he is giving me instructions because sometimes when you pray, you're thinking for just answers. You know, sometimes we pray and I would hear pastors often say, you know, when, when you're praying to the Lord, you're going to hear three things and you're going to hear yes, no, or wait. Not always so. Sometimes you pray to the Lord and instead of giving you a yes, a no, or a wait, he gives you instructions, right? right? So this particular time I'm praying and I'm in my car, the Lord says, make a left, I make a left. He says, make a right, I make a right. He says, keep going straight. 
at this point, I had just got off from work and it started getting dark at night. And I got, got a little worried because I'm like, you, I feel like you lead me somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And I see the way the horror movies are set up. And there's always that one girl who want to go out in the fog, in the dark, at night. And I'm like, Lord, you know you ain't made me this way, OK? I'm very sheltered, OK? So I'm driving down this road. It's a long, windy, dark road. Fog has filled the streets. It got sugar cane to my left and sugar cane to my right because I'm from Louisiana. I'm stressed, OK? And all of a sudden, I hear the Lord almost audibly, a loud, booming, echoing voice just saying, stop. So I stop. Mm. And I look, and I squint my eyes, and I see a cemetery. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And, you know, I start praying one of my silly prayers, I think. You know, I start saying, Lord, it ain't my time yet, is it? And the Lord, he ain't crack a joke with me back. So I was like, oh, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Mm. But then he goes on, and the Lord tells me, do you know where you are? I said, oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm at a cemetery. But then the Lord said, no, you are standing on one of the richest places on the planet. He said, here is a wealth wasteland. Here, billion dollar ideas were buried. There were songs that were never sung. There were books that were never written. There were scripts that were never saw on screen. Right. Ah, hallelujah. Cures that never were discovered. There, there, were, there were places that were never constructed. Mm -hmm. There were so many things that didn't happen, didn't come to fruition, just because somebody decided to get buried with their ideas. Right. And, you know, many of us, when we think about how we want to go out, because I've... Never really, I, I think at a young age, the enemy tried to convince me that I would not live long enough. You know, if, especially if you grow up in rough environments, you don't even think about what life would be like when you get older, right. Right? right? I never saw myself past a certain age. But I think that when people pass on or they're transitioning to go on to glory, we often have an idea that most people would like to be laying in their hospital bed or at home somewhere and with their family around them and you know, singing songs, praying prayers, and, yeah. and showing them love and giving them flowers while they could still smell it. But I could imagine that some people, when they are about to transition onto glory, there's other people there besides their family. It's three people. Amen. Your ideas, your dreams, and your goals. Right. And imagine them glaring at you with these large, angry eyes saying, we were invested into you. We were entrusted to you. You were supposed to birth us out. You were supposed to make us happen. You were supposed to make the world know who we were. We were given to you. Your ideas, your dreams, and your goals were supposed to be birthed out. But instead, you held it in there. Instead, you were too fearful. Instead, you were too insecure. Instead, you decided to be buried with billion dollars ideas, and you decided to live and to behave and to act as if, like, you don't have some time limit. I want everybody to really capture this idea that one day we are all going to die. I know it's dismal. I know it's dark. I know nobody wants to think about it. But one day, the Lord is going to call for us to go home. And what will you have to show for yourself? That's some real stuff. I know that's, that's grown folk Christianity, but what will you have to show for yourself? What do you want to be remembered for? Because God has invested some things in, inside of us. You know, I want to just tell you quickly what the definition of an investment is. It is the act of devoting time, energy, effort, or money to a, a, a a, p a particular undertaking with an expectation of a worthwhile result. Let me say that one more time. Investing is an act of devoting time, 
energy, attention, effort, or money to a particular undertaking with an expectation of a worthwhile result. Somebody in this place needs to know that there is a worthwhile result when you put your life in God's hands. Somebody needs to know that I've got an investment on the inside of me. It started out as a seed, but it's going to grow to be a tree that's planted by the living waters. Somebody needs to know that God placed some gifts, some skills, some talents, some dreams, some goals, some ambitions that have to be birthed out. So the title of my message is a return on an investment. Return on investment. Here we have in the scripture, it's entitled uh, here in Matthew, the chapter 25, verse 14. It's a parable. Remember, it's a parallel of, of everyday life and applicable to the kingdom principles, kingdom concepts. So here we often preach this text when we're talking about kingdom entrepreneurship, which I think is great. And, and I think that uh, talking about money in church is a good thing. But in this instance, when they talk about talents, um, when they when they're discussing the it's a unit of measurement of money during that time. It was a measurement of currency during that time. Wow. But how many of you know that talents and your time are the currency of your purpose? Wow. I'm going to say it one more time. Wow. Your time and your talent is the currency of your purpose. Wow. If you want to move in this world, if you want to move towards purpose, you've got to invest one of two things, either your time or your talent. That's just what it is. So here in this text, when we're talking about the talents, I want you to consider for a brief moment that when it says talents, it's talking about your time, your talents, or your money, okay? Just whatever situation is applicable for you. But I want you to, in the next few moments, we're going to, um, we're going to just crack into this text because there's so much that the Lord put on my heart. And so um, I want to start off by saying that, as we engage with this text, that there are seven R's to the return of investment. Wow. There's seven R's to this kingdom wealth principle, this kingdom purpose principle, okay? So I'm going to quickly give them to you, and then you're going to fill in the blank, because I feel like being a teacher today. Can I teach? Yes. Like how I want to teach? Okay. So the seven R's, the seven R's are receive, mm -hmm. recognize, resolve, Results, reveal, reap, and reward. That's good. We're going to say so it one good. more time. One more time. The seven R's to the kingdom wealth principle entitled return on investment is receive, recognize, resolve, results, reveal, reap, and reward. I think sometimes in this life, you know, especially when we've heard texts like this all of our life, a lot of times there's an emphasis on what we do wrong. If we read in the scripture, the, uh, the very end of the scripture, it talks about the consequences of when you bury your gift. Wow. But I really want to talk about the positive aspect, and I want to uplift you and encourage you to be like the person that sold their five talents and got five more back, okay? So we're going to be talking from the perspective of you're not bearing your gifts. We already decided that. So let's jump into this text. So verse 14, it says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Already, let's just stop right there. The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country country. How many of you know that your dream has a journey? Wow. Your dream will always have a journey. You think that you're going to get this thing like it's going to be a cakewalk, like you could just do this overnight. A lot of times we think, oh, somebody's an overnight success because you found out about them overnight. Yeah. But you didn't see the blood, sweat, and tears. You didn't see the sleepless nights. You didn't see the late nights and the early mornings. You didn't see the endless cups of coffee. You didn't see the times when they were ridiculed, they were scrutinized, they were criticized. Every dream comes with a journey. Yeah. Next, it says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, his own servants, yes. and delivered unto them his goods. I wrestled with this for a second because I said, hmm, this man is calling his servants to give them a gift. 
He called his servants to give them a gift. And then if you keep going, it says that it was according to their ability. I'm going to keep reading. I want to read this for you. It says, and to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Wow. What I found to be so intriguing about this is the fact that somebody who was in a position of authority decided to give gifts. That is the parable that we're talking about. God, who is in authority, do size to give us gifts, wow. talents, wow. ideas, so innovations. Thank you. But here's the powerful part. He said he gives them gifts according to their abilities. Jesus. So he gave somebody a gift of five talents mm -hmm. because they have the ability to carry five talents. Yeah. He gave somebody two talents because they have the capacity to carry this two talents. So he had another person just gave him one talent because he had the capacity to carry one talent. Yes. I looked up what the word deserve means because I was thinking, you know, sometimes when God gives us talents, we just be like, I deserve this. <laughs> I, I walk into this new season of answer prayer. I deserve this. I looked up what the root word of deserve means. And the Latin root word for deserve is desevere. Desevere really means to serve well, Come to on. serve completely, on, to honey. serve zealously. So what does that mean? That means in order to deserve, you've got to serve. Oh, y'all didn't catch it. I said in order so to deserve, good. you've got to serve. So good. You've got to serve to the level that you'd like to be honored. Yo, you've got to on. serve to the level that you'd like to be promoted. You've got to serve to the capacity that you'd like to be gifted. You've got to serve to where you want to go. You want to go to high places? You've got to serve to high people. You want to go to expansion? You've got to be in places where you're not expanded. You want to be wise? you got to settle for a season of feeling like you're dumb. Come on somebody. I wonder if I got one or two people in this place that's decided I'm going to serve my way to deserve the gifts that God placed on the inside of me. You got to serve so you can deserve. He says it was according to their ability. So my question is, what is your ability? Ability is the possession of the means or skills to do something, a talent, a skill, or, prof or proficiency in an area. Think to yourself, what comes naturally to me? Sometimes we don't want to take out the time to figure out what is it that I am good at. He said, according to their ability. Help us, Pastor. Not to what they think they're good at, because sometimes we, we uh, place all of our energy, all of our time, all of our attention, we invest in low value things. We invest our time into things that God never called us to do. We invest our time into people that God never told us to be in connection with. We invest ourselves in places where we ain't got the grace because that's not our ability. What comes naturally to you? Let's keep going, okay? So point one, the seven R's of the kingdom wealth principle of the return on investment. One, we receive. That's good. Mm -hmm. Receive. You receive gifts. You receive talents, ideas, innovations. You receive. I, I love in this text it says, in verse 16, it says, Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made another five talents. You've got to receive it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in our life, people could tell us all day, every day, you know you're really good at that. Yeah. You know you're really gifted at that. But until we receive, that's why oftentimes when we so get prophetic declarations, that's when people good, start Pastor. speaking life into us, we have to start to declare out of our mouth, I receive it. So I receive it because sometimes our spirit wants to receive it, but because our mouth, life and death are in the power of the tongue, because our mouth cancels the assignment of the prophetic decree, Come on. then it cannot, it cannot function anymore in our life because we decreed something against the plan of God. Yeah. So what we have to begin to do is when God says, you've got an ability, mm -hmm. you've got your cap, your calling, anointing, and purpose. When God starts speaking those things, you have to say, I receive it. Yes. 
I receive it. Why? Because Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, uh, before you were in your mother's womb, I called you, I sanctified you, I anointed you, I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. You've got to receive that thing. You've got to receive your anointing. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope and an expected end. You've got to receive it. You've got to receive when God says no weapon formed against you will prosper. You've got to receive it. You've got to receive when God says you are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not believe. You've got to receive it. Yes. Receive the talents. Receive the skills. Receive the anointing. Receive the dream that God placed on the inside of you. You've got to receive it. Huh? These are the seven R's of the return on investment. Then it goes on to say that then, and likewise, he that has received two, he also gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid the Lord's more money. After you receive it, then you've got to recognize. Come on, preacher. You've got to recognize. I want somebody to tap somebody next to you and just say, recognize. 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 We receive the, the gifts of God. We receive the talents that God gave us. We receive it. We say, okay, Lord, yeah, I am talented at that. Yeah, you know, I could do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, you're telling me I could write? I could write. Okay, yeah. You're telling me I could sing? I could sing. Well, you're telling me I could dance? I could dance. Yes. We receive it, but we don't recognize it. Recognize. I want to I wanna tell you a brief story really quickly. Go ahead. You know, one time there was a man who was walking down this dirt, dusty road in the middle of the desert cactus and tumbleweeds just flailing around in the distance. And as he's walking down this dirt, dusty road, he sees something glimmering off in the distance. He chalks it up to maybe that there's just somebody, you know, having some shattered beer bottles. And so it's, that's what was glimmering off in it, just some shattered glass. And they just kept on walking. Then another man walked past that same plot of land. And he was walking down that same dusty dirt uh, desert road. And as he was walking, he saw something glimmering off in the distance. And when he noticed something glimmering off in the distance, he walked up closer to it. And when he walked up to it, he realized that those were not shattered beer bottles, but rather it was diamonds. Mm. And the problem is, it's not the fact that you are not valuable. Mm. It's the fact that you feel like you need somebody to value, validate your value. Oh. And the problem is that you don't recognize the value that's on the inside of you. And because yeah. you don't recognize the value, the value that's on the inside of you, you look outside for other people to validate what the Lord placed on the inside Ooh, of you. Girl. Help us, First, Father. First, you got to receive it. Then you've got to recognize it. Help yes. us, Father. After you recognize, then you've got to resolve. you got to resolve. What is a resolve? Resolve is making your final decision. That's Some good. of us... We receive the gift of God. We say, yeah, Lord, I'm talented. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, yeah, okay. You say I can do it? All right. Then we recognize, oh, hold on. What I got right here is valuable. Mm -hmm. But then after that, we don't have no resolve. Mm -hmm. We got these gifts in our hand. And we say, well, I don't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just going to sit on it. Mm -hmm. We don't have no resolve. We don't have no passion. Mm -hmm. The problem is we like to live in this space of the gray area. We like to seesaw through our destiny. We like to sit in this, this place of lukewarmness where we say, well, I'm neither in it, neither am I out of it. Yeah. I recognize that I got this gift, but I'm not going to go for it yet. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. you got to have resolve. In order to see the return on investment, in order to give the Lord the fullness of your capacity of greatness, you got to have a resolve. Mm -hmm. That means you make it a decision. Yes, I'm going to live for him, or no, I'm not. Yes, I'm going to go for it, or no, I'm not. But then after you make your decision, then you've got to figure out your direction. Mm -hmm. After the decision comes the direction. Remember how I said, even in these silly prayers, sometimes the Lord would just give you instruction. Yes. So if good. you ask the Lord, even if, it's, even if it's a prayer where you're murmuring words, even if it's a prayer where you're shaking and crying, even if it's a prayer where you don't really understand and it doesn't even really make sense when it comes out loud, mm -hmm. you've got to ask the Lord for direction yes. for your resolve. Yes. So then yes. after you get that resolve of that decision and then you get direction, then you got to have dependency on God. Yes. Come on, good. I feel like That's Abraham, good. when Abraham was uh, called by God, he said, follow me to a land that I'm going to show you. Yeah. That's blind obedience. That's saying, Lord, I don't 
don't know what what you place on the inside of me, but Lord, if you're telling me to go in this direction, I'm going to go. If you're telling me to go down a dark, winding road in the middle of the night, Lord, I'm going to go. But if you're telling me to put out these, this content, and I'm afraid that I'm going to get rejected, but Lord, you're telling me that there's something on it. You're telling me that there's some oil on my life. You're yeah, telling me Lord. that there's a talent and an anointing yeah, that nobody has ever seen before. Lord, you're saying this about me, and because you're saying it, I've got to have dependency on you. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your word. But not only dependency your word, your on him, word, your word. but then you've got to have a determination that come what may, come hell or high water. doesn't matter what they say about me. It doesn't matter what they think about it. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. It doesn't matter if I can't see it in myself. I've got a determination. I am going to do this. That's good. I am going to pursue that. That's so I good. I am going to achieve it. That's so I good. I am going to believe in myself. That's so I good. I am going to go for it. Why? Because I've got a resolve. Jesus. I've got to resolve. Jesus. So first I've got to receive it. Then I've got to recognize it. Then after I recognize it, then I've got to resolve with it. Jesus. And after I resolve with it, then I have to produce results. Yes. I've got to produce results. Jesus. It's not enough to just say, I'm going to do it. And not produce results. Right. It's not enough to just say, I'm going to pursue it. I'm feeling good after this Sunday morning message. And you got to resolve, but you're not acting on it. Yeah. Ah, so many of us, we got faith. Mm -hmm. we, we even have endurance, mm -hmm. but we don't have execution. Yes. I want to speak to the execution in you. I want to speak to the person that's going to act on it. It's not enough to just speak on it. I need to see you be about it. Hey. The problem is, we say, well, Lord, Thank it's too hard. If it's hard, then do it hard. If this is the one thing that is standing in between you and your destiny, if this is the one thing, this one class is going to stop you from your anointing? Come on. This one workshop is going to stop you from where God called you to be? This, come on, somebody. This one obstacle is going to stop you from your opportunity? Come on, I wonder if I have somebody in this place Jesus. that has decided I'm going to produce results in this season. Jesus. Because that's, that's what fruitfulness is. That's what sowing is. Jesus. It's I am going to produce. Yes. Am I producing for my purpose? Help me find oh. I know I want this multi-million dollar business, but have I written out the business plan? Oh, I know that I, I said that I'm going to pursue that certification, but did I start taking the class? Jesus. I know I said that I'm going to be a writer, but did I write one sentence yet? Oh, Jesus. I know that I said I was going to go online and start pushing my blog and my content, but did I post one thing yet? Oh, yeah. Help us, Father. I know I want to pursue that business. I want to pursue that book. I wanted to pursue that relationship. But did I make any steps towards it? Um, Are you producing for your purpose? Help us, Father. You got to do the hard stuff. And if it's hard, do it hard. Mm. The seven R's to the return on the investment. First, you got to receive it. After you receive it, you got to recognize it. After you recognize it, then you got to resolve it. After you resolve it, then you need to produce results. And after you produce the results, then comes the reveal. That's good. The reveal. Ah, the reveal. Hallelujah. In this text, what we're wrestling with is then going through this process. And what we see is the reveal. I want to show you right here. It says, it says, verse 19, it says, After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned reckon with him. And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents. He brought five other talents. I want you to jump down. Then it goes on to say, in verse 22, He that also received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest to me two talents. Behold, I gained another two talents. That's a reveal. And then I want you to jump down to, uh, to verse 24. It says, Then he that received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you uh, are a man weeping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and I hid the talent in the earth. And lo, it is. That's the Shaman translation. Yeah. Yeah. He said, no, it is. <laughs> and so that's the reveal. What do I have to show for myself? Mm. What am I going to be remembered for? 
question. That's good. What is it that I have produced? What is the product? This is so good. I have the resolve that I was going to do it. I produced the results that I did it. But what do I have to show for myself? I was blessing all these other people. What do I have to show for myself? I've been investing in all these other places, but what do I have to show for myself? I've been, I've been uh, expending all of my energy in all these different places, but what do I have to show for myself? When it's his to call and my to answer, what do I have to show for myself? What is the reveal? Then after the reveal, we have the reap. The reap. What is reaping? R-E-A-P. Reaping is either a benefit or the consequence of the result. That's good. It's either the benefit or the consequence. I know people often say, you reap what you sow, and they say it in a way that's like, like I did something bad. But it's also a positive, too, that when you reap good things, when, when you sow good things, you reap good things. When you put something good in there, good comes back out. Yeah. When you sow your time into a ministry that's small, that's here in the heart of downtown LA, something good comes out of that. Yeah. When you volunteer to babysit for a single mother, something good comes out of that. Yeah. When you donate your time, your energy, your talents, you, you know, your, 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 special, your specialties and your, your expertise in feeding the homeless, Something good comes out of that. When you pour out your time and your energy into the things that God tells you to do, something good comes out of it. When you bite your tongue and you choose not to be petty when you could be, something good comes out of that. God is always watching. The eyes of the Lord roam to and fro, beholding both the good and the evil. He sees when you do good. I know we like to often say, oh, God is watching you if you do something bad. But he's watching if I do something good, too. He saw whenever I gave $2 to the homeless person. He saw that. Come on. He saw it. He saw it when you had the capacity to end somebody, to hurt somebody, to break somebody down, to shatter their confidence, and you chose not to. He saw that. When you do something in the earth, when you invest yourself into this earth and you and you show your, your fellow man love and kindness and you show them the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the evidence that the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, yeah. good things come out of that. Yeah. I'm talking about the reaping. I want you to see right here the character of these people, these servants, who because they serve, they deserve. Yeah. All right, because they serve, they deserve these things, okay? Because before, when I was younger, I saw the, the, the servant that hid the talent. I was like, well, that sounds smart to me because I might lose it. I might mess it up. But I want you to see the person that invested. It says, he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And what is so good about this is the fact that if you jump back down to uh, verse 28, it says, therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him which has 10 talents. Before, I felt like that was really unfair because I'm like, this person was trying to be safe and they held it and they, they buried it in the ground so that way nobody was going to bother it. And you, you gave this person, they already got 10. Why would you take from that one person and give it to somebody who got 10? That sounds unfair to me because that's flesh. That's how we think. We think that everything's unfair if you're an underdog, right? But here in the text, it's talking about when you sow a lot, you get a lot. Come on. When you put yourself out there yeah. and you say, you know what, scared or not scared, I'm going to do it. I've got, I've received the gift. I recognize the gift. I resolved I've got the gift. I re, I've, I'm producing the results. Not only am I producing results, but I revealed the results. So you see what I got. You wow. see you see the fact that I'm accomplishing these things. You see I'm crushing these goals. And after wow. I do that, I reap what I put out there. I went out there and I got it out the mud. I went out there I hustled. I stayed up late at night and I did what I had to do. And because of those things, now we get to the last are of the return on investment, the reward, the reward, the blessings of God that make it rich and add no sorrow to it. It's the blessing of God that when you, uh, when you put your plans in his hands, he establishes you. Come on, when you commit your works to him, 
I'm talking about the anointing. I'm talking about the strength. I'm talking about the wisdom to operate in places and spaces outside of just the church. People got it all twisted, and we think that, oh, in order to be saved and only be Christian, you got to be poor. Not, not so, child of God. The Holy Spirit gives us insight, prophetic insight, on how to operate in these types of spaces. Th that we would have the, the anointed to understand people who have power, ability, and influence to show us how to make money, how to be able to put tithes into the storehouse so there would be meat in God's house. Yeah. We are not meant to be poor or paupers. We're meant to be princes. Yes. That's the power. We're Thank supposed you, to be Father. in palaces. Mm -hmm. that's, that's our portion. That is our inheritance. Jesus. I want you to see this. When you go through these seven R's, you receive, I'm almost closing. When you receive the gift and talents, then you recognize the talent. You figure out, okay, this is what comes naturally to me. This is what I'm good at. And then after you recognize what's good about you and what you can do, then you have a resolve. You make a decision that, yes, I'm going to do this. Then you have direction. Yes, this is the path I'm going to go in. And then you have dependency on God. Yes, Lord. Okay, I'm going to depend on you for what I'm supposed to do next. And then you have determination to reach your goals. Then you get a res results and you begin to produce for the kingdom and you say, you know what? Am I producing for my, for my purpose? And then if I'm not producing for my purpose, Lord, show me the hard thing that I need to conquer. Show me the obstacle I need to get over. Then after he shows you that, then you get the reveal. You reveal, these are the fruits of my labor. This is what I have to show for myself. And then afterwards you reap, you get either the benefit or you get the consequence. And then after that, you get the reward. You see the blessings of God that make you rich. And then you see the return on investment. The return on investment is when you are faithful to produce, God is faithful to provide. I want you to hear that again. When you are faithful to produce, God is faithful to provide. You're not going to have to look and try to figure out where to get the loan. You're not going to have to worry about if somebody's going to bless you or not. You're not going to have to worry about your bills piling up. You're not going to have to worry about getting evicted. Come on, somebody. You're not going to worry about getting your car repossessed anymore. You're not going to worry about if they're going to support you or not. You're not going to worry about anybody's opinions because guess what? I've got a return on an investment. I invested some things and I'm going to see the fruit of my labor. I invested some things, and I expect to see a return on investment. I devoted my time, my energy, my talent, my attention, my money, my efforts into an undertaking. And I have an expectation that is worthwhile. It's worthwhile. It's worth it. But what happens whenever we, when we don't invest? We don't receive a return on investment. What happens when we bury our gifts? I found it very interesting in the text that the one that didn't sow, that, that, that didn't uh, trade or do anything with his talent, he said that he dug something up. He dug, he dug up the earth and he hid it. I looked up what digging means. It means to bring up from underground, to uncover, to discover. And then I looked up what hide means. And hide means to conceal and to keep out of sight, to keep secret or unknown. The Latin for the word hid means uh, absent, missing, gone. So if you mix digging and hiding together, you have discovering and then keeping it a secret. You have discovering your talent and then keeping it unknown, keeping it missing, absent, away. When we dig up what we're supposed to do and then hide it and know that we have a talent, know that we have a gift, and we purposefully bury it in the ground, that's, that's when we don't see the return on investment. Yes, Jesus. So I'm going to give you some quick ideas as to why we may bury things in the ground. We may bury things in the ground because of insecurity. Mm -hmm. We have an insecurity that... Well, I only got one talent. They got five, they got two. Only got one talent. What can I do with this one talent? It's not a big deal, it's small, it's just one talent. So how could God possibly use this one skill that I have? Jesus. And insecurity is an identity issue. It's because you don't know who you are. 
-hmm. You don't understand that you're a child of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And not only that is you have these unrealistic expectations and you compare yourself to somebody who got five times and two times. Little do you know that one, all it takes is one idea. All it takes yes. is one connection, one business card, one touch, one word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes. But because we have these unrealistic expectations, we fall into insecurity. Mm -hmm. And insecurity is an illusion. It's a mad mirror house that magnetizes the worst in you and minimizes the best in you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. It is the lie of inadequacy that I don't measure up. But another reason why you could probably be burying your gift is because of bitterness. Mm -hmm. They don't recognize Jesus. my talent. Jesus. They don't recognize my gift. They don't recognize the skills that I have to offer. I deserve that promotion over that person. Mm -hmm. We are harboring angerness and, 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 and unforgiveness and, and holding these grudges. Mm -hmm. Bitterness is like a cancer. Mm -hmm. It eats away at the host. Mm -hmm. Another reason why we might be bearing our gift is because of procrastination. Good God on Because we're investing our time, our energy, our effort, our attention, our money, and all of our efforts into low value areas of our life. Investing into people who have no intention of returning their investment. We invest our time into jobs that will never benefit us. We invest our, our love into relationships where we are not getting reciprocal, uh, reciprocal love and, and a connection. We, we deal with procrastination because we have poor time management. We don't know how to manage our time. We, we, we allow time to do us instead of us doing time. Mm -hmm. We allow our days to be confused and cluttered because we don't have any clarity. I want to read this quote to you, and then after that, I'm going to get out of your way, and we're going to pray, okay? This quote, it's by Napoleon Hill. He says, there's one quality that is that one must possess in order to win, and it is the definiteness of purpose the knowledge of what one wants, and the burning desire to achieve it. The problem is, when we are dealing with burying our gifts and burying billion dollar ideas, the problem is, we didn't go through the seven R's of the return on investment. We didn't receive it. We didn't receive it when God spoke that thing to us. We, we canceled the prophetic degree. Then we didn't recognize that we have a talent or ability that comes naturally to us. We didn't resolve that this is what we're going to do and that we would have decision or direction or dependency on God or determination. We chose not to produce any results. We have nothing to show for ourselves. We didn't want to do the hard stuff. We didn't want to overcome the obstacles and see them as opportunities. We weren't able to reveal what we have to show for ourselves. We don't show the fruit of our labors. We, we reap what we sowed. And if we sowed nothing, we get nothing. If we sowed a lot, we get a lot. And then we have the reward, where God will either bless us or take away from us, depending upon whether or not if we invest it or not. Those are the seven R's on the return on investment. And I would just like to extend this. Be sure that throughout the course of this week, Begin to use this message as a measuring rod, as a ruler towards your success, your ambition, your dreams, your hopes, your goals, whatever it is that God placed on the inside of you. I want you to listen back at this message and I want you to look yourself in the mirror and say, have I really been investing in the things of God? And based off of where my life is now, can I expect a return on investment? These are questions you need to ask yourself. I can't answer him for you. I know that when it's his to call and mine to answer, I've been sowing good seeds so I can expect a plentiful harvest. But if you sow nothing, you can get nothing. So it is in this context and in these temperatures and in this atmosphere, let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Oh God. Lord, this was your word. I pray that this word would revolutionize our mindsets. Lord, I pray that this word convicted the hearts of your people. I pray that this word will forever change our lives and the way that we view ourselves, Father. We thank you that we don't need validation from other people to confirm our value. 
Lord, we come against the insecurity that would try to make us bury our billion dollar ideas. We come against, Father, even the bitterness, the anger, the resentment, the, the holding of grudges, Father, the records of wrongs, Father, that would stop us from accessing the gifts of God. Father, we come against the procrastination of the, the, the lie of the enemy that we have all this time in the world, Father. We don't want to be in the wasteland of wealth. We don't want to sit at a cemetery and see that we have nothing to show for ourselves, Father. We want that when it's yours to call and ours to answer, that you would say, you've been faithful over few. I'll make you ruler over many, Lord. When it's time, and Father, when you, when you say, my good and faithful servants, well done in our doing, Father. Help us to not get weary in well-doing, but Lord, in our doing, help us to get a well done. We want a well done in our careers. We want a well done in our relationships. We want a well done in our marriages. We want a well done in our families, Father. We want a well done in our communities, Father. We need a well done in our ministry, Father. We want a well done, our good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few. Let me make you ruler over many, Lord. We pray that the seeds that we sow in this season in tears. Father, even the seasons that we're sowing in tears, planting in tears, sowing and, and, and putting all of our effort, our time, our energy, all of our investment, Father, all these things that we're doing in this season, I pray that we would reap a plentiful harvest. Let us see a perpetual harvest. Father, let the seeds that we sow right now, let us see it again. Why? Because, Lord, that we receive the gifting of God. We receive the anointing of God. We receive the talents of God. Father, we recognize that there is a plan for our life, Father. We recognize that you got some good things plan for us, Father. We resolve that we're going to do it. Oh, God, we even we even promise that we're going to produce the results, Father. If it's hard, we're going to do it hard. Oh, Lord, we even thank you right now for the reveal. When we reveal the fruit of our labels, Father, I pray that you would get the glory out of it and that we would reap a plentiful harvest. And not only that, Lord, that we would see the reward. Yes. Hallelujah. You are a God not only who is judged, but you are a God who rewards. Your word says, if you who are evil would give good gifts to your children, how much more? Hallelujah. How much more will I bless you? How much more will I gift you? How much more will I expand you? How much more will I bless you? We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the dream that has a journey. And we pray in the mighty matchless name of Jesus that you would give us strength for our assignment in this journey, Lord. Give us wisdom, clarity, insight, hindsight, and foresight on where to invest, where to go next, who to bless. In Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. And we seal it in your mighty, precious blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is just so good. And in this moment, if you don't know who Jesus is, I just want to extend this moment to you. And... I want to say that all that it takes for you to see the return on investment is that you would just have to take out this moment because the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you'll be saved. So um, I, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you are, but maybe you said, you know, something that that girl said with the braids, I don't know. She was she was speaking to me, you know, so, something about how she said it, something about the way that she broke that thing down. You know, I just feel like she was talking to me. And if that's you, I want to take out this moment and pray for you. All right. And just say, Father, Father I know that I'm full of sin. I'm full of sin. Lord, I know, Lord, I know that, when I your name, that when I call your name, everything must change. Everything must change. So, Lord, I confess. You to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Cleanse me. Detoxify me. Change me from the inside out. Change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 <laughs> when one soul is saved, all of heaven rejoices. Yes. So we're so excited that um, you would join us in that salvation prayer. And um, I'm just excited for what the Lord is about to do next in this ministry with this so series. It has been blessing and changing our lives, snatching our edges. It snatches mine, okay? Um, but Seed on Water, so series has been such a blessing. And maybe during the course of this message, you said, you know what? 
that message really blessed me. I felt a wind on that word. I felt a weight on that word. I felt like that word changed the whole trajectory of my life. If that's how you feel as you're watching on the other side of the screen, or maybe those who are in this room with us right now, you say, you know what? I'm going to make my very first investment. I'm going to do the first act of devoting my time, my money, my energy, my attention, my efforts into an undertaking that I know I have an expectation it's worthwhile. I know there's something about this detoxified church. I, I don't know what it is just yet, but I know that there's something behind this ministry. It's blessing me so much. There's something behind this ministry. If that's how you feel, you can feel free to sow. I believe that we're going to have the information that you can text to give um, in the description box below. Um, you can text to give. You could also give on our Tithely website. Um, if you look up the Detoxify Church LA, you will see the information there for you to give. Um, we are making it more and more accessible for you to give, especially if you're watching on Instagram or on Facebook or YouTube. There will be all the necessary information that you need in the description box below. But if you can give, give. If you can give, give. And maybe you say, well, Siobhan, I ain't got no money. How am I supposed to go and give? How am I supposed to sow it? I ain't got nothing. You know, I feel like the, I feel like the servant that got only one, one little talent. How am I supposed to sow? Well, I want to say this. If you do have a gift, if you got a skill, if you got an anointing, even if it feels like it's random or it's weird or it's awkward or, you know, you feel like you don't have very much to offer, we have so many different areas in this ministry where you can sow your time. You can sow your talent. You can sow your skills here. We have all different types of departments. You're good at technology. We've got a department for that. You're good at film and production. We've got a department for that. You're good at creative concepts. We've got a, a place for you there. If you're good at worship, we've got a place for you here. There is a place for you here at Detoxify Church LA. And so just for the next few moments, we're gonna let the music play. And I want you to go ahead, if you, if you got your phones, feel free to sew right now. We're gonna take out this time and allow for the Lord to minister to your heart and so whatever you can. If it's $1, so $1. If it's $5, so $5. These lights, these cameras, it, it's only because of your contribution and viewers like you that help us out. That, and I know some of y'all right now, I feel it in my shondo. Some of y'all clicking off right now because I'm talking about money. But I'm talking about a kingdom principle. It's more than just about the coins. It's more than about money. But it's about your heart. It's about where you want to go. It's about your purpose. It's about God's plan for your life. It's bigger than just people. It's bigger than just a credit card. It's bigger than just a few dollars. It's about where your heart is. So we have the information. I believe it's on the screen, right? We have the information for you to go ahead and give. If you felt a wind on the word, if you felt a weight on this word, if you said, man, this is me. I, I'm the servant with the five talents and I need to go out here and hustle. Or maybe you say, I'm the one with the one talent. I've been burying my gifts. I've been hiding who I am. I, I've been acting like I'm not anointed when I know that I am. I've been acting like I'm not smart when I know that I am. If that's you, if you can give, give. And we also have um, different resources. If you go on the DCLA website and um, on our Instagram, the link tree, you'll be able to find other access resources and tools that you can sow your time and attention, all right? So with that being said, we just thank you right now, Lord, hallelujah, just for those who had the heart to give and those who did give, Father. Lord, I pray that those who, who had a heart to give but could not give, Father, I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would expand their coast, expand their territory, Father. I pray that you would give them the, the tools and the resources and the ability and the revenue and the capital, Father, to be able to begin to bless this ministry and also, Father, that they would be able to see a return on investment, Father. And I pray even in the name of Jesus, that those who did uh, bless this ministry, Father, I pray that they would see a blessing and a breakthrough, Father. Hallelujah, that you would, would not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that we would not have room enough to receive pressed down. Hallelujah, shaken together and running over will men begin to give to our bosom. Father, I pray that you begin to send people who have power, ability, and influence to bless us. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow, God is doing so many amazing things here, and we're about to go ahead out, and, but we just want you to know that you are loved, you are blessed, you are beautiful, you are detoxified by God's amazing grace, and not only that, we exist to pursue purpose, to create community, and to detoxify daily. 
So until next time, remember Jesus, love, and peace. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>